So Matt, I'm gonna go and turn on the arm. I can go up. Okay, and back down. This is the most complex robotic arm in existence today. You can control that using thought from the brain. As humans, we are tool users. And every time we invent a new tool, that changes the way we live. Outside of Baltimore, Maryland, the Applied Physics Laboratory, a branch of Johns Hopkins University, is an unlikely incubator for robotics that are pushing the limits of human-machine interfaces. Thanks in part to a DARPA program started in 2005, engineers have developed the Modular Prosthetic Limb, a bionic arm that responds to human thought, creating a new generation of robotics that can seamlessly integrate with our bodies. This technology is still relatively new, and the effects that robotic bodies will have on our future are already raising serious social and ethical questions. There's a lot of interest in how this is affecting the way we evolve. Where's this all go in the future? You know, I think we're just at the beginning. It could be tremendous. Scientists are trying to bridge the gap, but it's the patients that will push the limits of this technology forward. We went to Baltimore to meet with Melissa Loomis, an amputee from Ohio who is visiting the lab to be outfitted with the bionic limb for the first time. Thanks to a groundbreaking surgery called sensory re that remapped her nerves responsible for touch, Melissa is one of the first amputees in the world to be able to feel through a robotic prosthetic. So can you walk us through what took place on the day of your accident? It was 6 o'clock on a Saturday morning on July 25th. Uh, I got up to let my dogs out, heard horrible noise, went outside, and the dogs had a raccoon cornered on the top of the fence. And then they both kind of went in for the kill and I went to grab the dogs off of the raccoon, and the raccoon grabbed onto my forearm. So I grabbed it and threw it over the fence. I had gotten bitten on my forearm, and I was just kind of standing there bleeding. So I went straight to the hospital. They said, you're, you're now going to be referred to Dr. Seth. He's our hand specialist. And he said he'd never seen such a terrible infection. It just kept getting worse and worse. So I went septic, and they said, I'm going to take your arm, or you're going to die. This right here is my muscles and tendon, and that was the top of my arm. 29 days and 13 surgeries later, I had my arm amputated. To get up in the morning, get a shower, and brush your teeth, and get ready for work, you know, whereas it was a 15-minute process before my accident, now it's a half an hour process. I can't just go home and make dinner by myself without help opening cans or lifting pots, buttoning buttons, zipping zippers, little things that you never think about. I hope to just use my robotic arm just like I use my regular arm and just go about my business as a normal two-arm person. Just behind me is the Applied Physics Laboratory at John Hopkins University, where we're meeting the chief engineer, Dr. Mike McLaughlin, and his team. They're working on neuroprosthetics that are controlled by the mind. This is completely revolutionizing how human beings interact with machines. So this was a, a program started by DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. And the whole purpose was really to move prosthetics to a whole new level. Akil, this is Robo Sally. Robo Sally has two of the prosthetic limbs. This arm can do basically everything you can do with your hand. The modular prosthetic limb, or MPL, interprets and converts signals from the body's nervous system to motion. When the MPL interacts with an object, signals from over 100 sensors send information back to the brain, creating a sense of touch. These are very expensive. This limb costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. But at the end of the day, we really want to get this out so people can use it in everyday life. Whoa. More expensive than my whole life. So what's unique about Melissa is that we'll be able to actually feed back to her sensory information at a level that we haven't been able to do before. That is really going to move this to you know, an entirely new level. So you've been quoted saying that uh, Melissa is a very special case, uh, very rare. Can you explain? Yeah. 
We ended up doing a surgery. It's called targeted muscle re is a type of surgery that allows an amputee to use their brain to operate the bionic or prosthetic arm. If she wants to open her hand, she just thinks, open my hand. Now, the part that's never been done here in the US was to try to get someone to feel their prosthetic hand, the targeted sensory re -innervation. If you have a prosthetic arm, you can't feel. You can't hold somebody's hand and feel that touch. And so what I ended up doing was finding the nerve that gives you feeling. And I took that, basically attached it to her skin here and here. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that if that nerve gives you feeling here, her brain will think that her fingers are actually here. Because of her surgery, the quality of sensory signals Melissa receives are better than anything tested before with the bionic limb. We accompanied Melissa as she used the prosthetic limb for the first time. You ready? Basically, they just put sensors around my arm that could read my muscle patterns, and then I would do the movements with my imaginary arm, and the machine would recognize the muscle patterns, and then the arm would do those motions afterwards. The limb may move in a weird way, and that's okay, because it's the first time it's hearing those muscle patterns. We'll do elbow up and down. Nice. The arm learns how to understand what you want to do as opposed to you learning how to control the arm. That's a very fundamental difference of what we're trying to do here. So the next one we want to try is the, um, the hand close. And relax. So when you first used the modular prosthetic limb, how did it feel to control it with your mind? You know, you control your hand with your mind naturally. So to me, I feel like I have a hand and I'm just moving it naturally. Just try the thumb. Let's go ahead and try um, to do a, a tip grasp. Very nice. nice. Perfect. I mean, and these are really fine movements to be able to pick up those individual movements is pretty amazing. So this is thumb. Okay, so the, 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 the thumb is red. And they put the sensors on where the nerves are re innervated into the skin. He put little spots where you can feel the fingers tingle, like here, my thumb tingle. Each individual finger has its own kind of little spot. All right, I'm gonna buzz it. Let me know if it's uncomfortable or, can you feel it? Yeah. When they vibrated, I would just say, this is this finger, and we just went through all the fingers. Is there a perception of where the vibration is coming from? When you can't localize it, does it just feel like it's coming all through the phantom? Does it ever feel like it's actually on your upper arm? No, it's... It's all coming comes, through the hand? Yeah. It's huge that it's coming from your phantom, and not sort of on yeah, your arm. This is like arm. first ever, so there's so, no oh, one great. Yeah, right. No one's ever seen this before. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? Yep. This is it? Yeah, right. You can feel it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Ready? Close your eyes. Oh. Right there? Yeah. All right, so let's see if you can tell when you've actually gotten this. So just close slowly. Got it. Got it, got it, got it. OK, and open. That's awesome, Melissa. Your case is very special because you're able to feel. So can you walk us through how it felt um, using a prosthetic limb? Good, because, I mean, I wanted, that's the thing I miss the most. It felt like tingling in my fingers. When I would grab onto the ball, it would like vibrate. Like sometimes I'd be like, oh wow, that was like a jolt up your finger. And you were the first in the country to have this. Correct. It's just incredible. Oh, yeah, got it, got it. We nailed it. We showed that you can feel and you can move a prosthetic hand. I felt the orange ball. Wow, this is huge. I'm gonna be the bionic woman. Okay. Watching Melissa interface with the machine to regain capability she thought she lost was incredible. But being bionic raises a new question. 
Can a bionic arm outclass a human one? People frequently draw comparisons to the Terminator, and, you know, our arm can curl 45 pounds. You know, it's not going to pick up a, a bus. While even the most advanced prosthetic is no replacement for a flesh and blood limb, as the technology progresses, we're likely to progress with it. Neuroprosthetics are still in their infancy and limited mostly to medical use. But what happens when these technologies become more advanced, smarter, stronger? Will other people want them? Policymakers have already started to bring up the issue that as humans become more mechanical, our laws will have to evolve to reflect how we look at privacy, access, and domain over our own bodies. You know, there's certainly lots of ethics questions going around about robotics. You can hack into those devices. People have shown you can hack into cars and have them do things that you don't want them to do. I really believe that in the end, you know, we'll be able to deal with those kinds of things. Humanity has so much to gain here. So, yes, I think all these technologies will, will change us. But I don't think that's a bad thing.